Okay, in this problem, we're doing something a little bit more advanced. We're getting into convertible debt when it comes to earnings per share. Don't be scared. There's going to be multiple points in this problem where you're going to be like, oh, no, oh, no, please don't say this. No, oh, it's going to be so hard. Oh, oh, your brain's going to want to turn off. Don't do that. That's the way you make a difference. All right, so don't turn your brain off in this problem, okay? Uh, let's get started. Assume the company has the following. Net income of 750000 an average of 690,000 shares of common stock outstanding. They also have 50,000 of 6%, that's the interest rate, 6% of convertible bonds outstanding that are convertible into a total of 10,000 shares, no other potentially diluted securities, okay? And then an effective tax rate of uh, is 30%. Okay, so what do we know for basic earnings per share that we have? We have our net income, right? And if you recall, our net income, what's our net income net of? It's revenue minus expenses, right? Gets us to our net income. And that net income is equal to that 750, right? 750, 750,000. Oh, isn't this so nice? They have an average number of shares outstanding, common shares outstanding of 690. Well, well, we have our net income. We have average shares outstanding. We didn't see any preferred securities or preferred dividends. Man, we can do basic EPS right now. Let's get at it. Basic EPS is equal to this uh, 750 over, because we don't have any preferred dividends, it's over the 690. And that, if you do if you do a plug and chug of that, is equal to 109. That's our basic EPS. Great. Okay, we're done. No more to the problem, right? Everything's done. It's easy. We go. No, of course, there's more. We have this debt. Ooh. Ooh, this feels weird. Ugh. Well, they're not common shareholders yet, but they could convert to common shareholders. All right, so they're going to convert to common shareholders. And we have to think, how does this impact this equation? We have this number up here, net income. When Let me ask you this. Do, do we get loans and we don't have to pay interest on them? I mean, sometimes that happens really weird. That's a really weird situation when that happens. Usually a family member is involved in that. Uh, that's not a that's not a typical thing. Usually when we get money, we have to pay interest. We have to pay interest, and interest never sleeps. You're always paying it, making money every moment. Makes money on time. So the interest expense, which is going to be a six percent, this interest, the interest rate here, it impacts things. It's an expense. Well, let me ask you this. So this already factors in the income, uh, the interest expense here. This this revenue minus expenses equals net income. But if bondholders convert to common shareholders, uh, are we going to have interest expense anymore for those bonds? No, absolutely not. You don't get to collect interest and convert your security. Give me a break. No, of course not. When this converts, when these bonds convert to get to our diluted earnings per share, we actually have to factor that this interest expense is coming out. All right. So the interest expense, interest expense is coming out. And what else happens? Interest expenses, so our interest is lower, our revenue stays the same, our interest is lower, and because that interest is lower, our net income will be higher. Is that the only thing affected by it? No. See that tax rate right there? Why do we need that tax rate there? Because uh, technically we would have more income. Technically we'd have more income. So because we have more income, we actually have to factor in the tax associated with this. And we have to find the after-tax amount of net income that we have. Some of you are like, oh, this sounds hard. You know, don't worry about it. It's easy. All you got to do, is you take that 50,000 of the debt outstanding. You multiply that by the tax, or I'm sorry, you multiply that by the interest rate, this uh, 6% right here. And that 50,000 times 0 0.06, that's going to get us what the interest expense was on the income statement of 3,000. And this is where everybody makes a mistake. They think, oh, I ran, I've got it, I'm good, off to the races. And they always forget. Always forget it's so simple. They forget the 30%. So the 30% tax rate, what you got to do is you got to take that 3,000 times 1 minus the tax rate. And why is it 1 minus the tax rate? Because that's the amount you get to keep. That's what you get to keep of this money that you don't pay on it because... You know, the man comes and gets your money, right? The tax man. Tax man comes and gets your money and you get to keep 70% of it, right? So the $3,000 that you don't have to pay now um, becomes part of your income. But that $3,000 is not all yours. Some of it's owed in taxes. 
So you got to do the after-tax effect of that. And the after-tax, if you do the calculation, turns out to be 2,100. And that makes sense because it's point, uh, you know, it's 70% of 30,000. Uh, I'm sorry. That makes sense because it's 70% of 3,000. So that 2,100, what do we do with that? Well, that is going to increase our net income. Increasing our net income because we don't have this interest expense anymore. And we've taken the after-tax effect of it. So let's just plug it in now. We got 750 plus this 2,100 that is now being added back because we don't have any interest expense. And then we have our 690 and we're done, right? Wrong. No, of course we're not done. We're not done. Don't forget, you got to give them their shares, the 10,000 shares. They don't just convert for this stuff for nothing. They get their 10,000 shares. They got to get their 10,000 shares. So this will end up being 700,000 on the denominator. Okay. So if you add these up together, uh, your basic EPS was 109. If you add these together, you end up with an answer of 1.07 as your diluted earnings per share. And this is a sim more simple way to uh, present it all. Uh, so you have your basic earnings per share that is, you know, what's your net income? What's your weighted average shares outstanding? We're done, 1.09. Diluted earnings per share, if converted method, what you do is you say, okay, net income, add back the after-tax effect on income of not paying interest, okay? If you're not paying interest, that's, Money you don't have to pay, you have to pay taxes on money you don't pay in business and because we pay it on net income. And then uh, the weighted average number of shares outstanding, uh, you add, have to add 10,000 shares there. So you add those 10,000 shares there. So the 690 becomes, uh, you add the 10,000 10, shares, it becomes seven 700,000 shares. Your uh, basic EPS is 109. Your dilutive EPS is 107. And that's just like what we had over here in my third grader handwriting. We'll see you in the next video.